God. Ah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the video. Got my cuppa. Don't be fooled, I actually did make this a little while ago and then Jace woke up crying and I had to tend to him and gather my stuff and now I'm finally out here. So for those of you who don't know me, my name's Alex. I have a six week old and a two and a half year old who is at daycare today. Um, I just put the six week old down for a nap so I'm going to record this video. Um, usually I would do this inside but my husband is off work, um, no not off work, he's working from home because of coronavirus and I just feel weird doing this inside so um, and I was going to do a nice you know in front of the palm trees with the uh, washing hanging in the background but the lighting's bad so you get to look at this beautiful portion of my backyard um so mm, and he's crying again so <laughs> we're off to a good start let's just see he might resettle himself so we'll just wait a few minutes um okay so this video is about postpartum experience i wanted to make this video I was kind of inspired by a YouTuber that I watch, uh, Kendra. She did a video on postpartum experience and had a lot of good feedback because I think um, when it comes to postpartum experience, there's not a lot of information out there. Like you get the formal information that your healthcare providers give you about, oh, you know, you might experience depression and anxiety and stuff, but aside as for the actual nitty gritty of the day to day experience, I feel like there's not a lot of info out there. I feel like um, when you're in that postpartum phase or just in general with people with babies, you mostly just see their Instagram feed of the cute baby photos and the, oh, so in love with my baby, we're so blessed, we feel so complete, um, blah, 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 which is all true, but no, well, not, many people post the reality of the challenging parts so when you have a baby for the first time you kind of it can be quite shocking to experience some of the challenging bits and so I feel like the more that people can open up the conversation about the actual experience of, of what it can be like then it better prepares people but it also makes people feel better supported if they're going through these challenges that they know that they're not alone because when I had my first uh, baby I kind of was like um, I kind of felt like why by the way we're sitting next to a road and it's windy so apologies for the noise but I kind of felt like why am I finding this challenging um, I don't think any of my other friends have found this challenging like what am I doing wrong type thing but then when you start to have conversations with your friends that that you know will be real with you or you open up to your mother's groups and things then you do find out that yes other people struggle with these things too so that is the reason why I decided to make this video even if happening in here he seems to have settled um, even if this video reaches out to one person who's having some trouble um, then that is fantastic I will be happy with that okay so I have a very rough plan about what I'm going to talk about here I think I'm going to talk about this in terms of first baby experience and then second baby experience but just generally speaking um, I just want to start out by saying that if you are a first time mum and you are having a hard time with like a newborn baby, it does actually get easier. It gets a lot easier. Um, so, and that comes with like learning, but it also comes, 
it comes through just adapting so don't fret it does get easier it can be really hard at the start and you're not alone um, so I also want to say even though in this video I'm going to be focusing on the challenging parts because you don't need me to sit here and be like oh it's so wonderful like pushing my baby around um, the shops and getting cute outfits and meeting up with friends and like cuddling my new baby yes all that stuff is completely wonderful there are lots of wonderful things um, falling in love with your baby it's great but you don't need to hear me talk about that so we're just going to focus on the challenging bits and hopefully that can help I'm just going to keep this here otherwise it's going to go cold okay so I'm just going to say um, with my second arrival of my second baby this experience has been overall much easier than going from no baby to one baby and the reasons for that are well there's several reasons one of them is that you know what to expect you've done it before um, with going from no baby to one baby it's a it's a big life shift um, you know what you're doing a bit more um, you have some tips and tricks up your sleeve with regards to sleeping and feeding you know that the, the hard bits are just phases um, this this time has also been a bit easier for me because we've been better able to manage our um, visitors I feel like we had a lot of visitors the first time and it made it actually made it harder because you were kind of managing a lot of other people's expectations um, and that's just because we moved this time has also been easier for me because my husband is working from home because of coronavirus and so um, he's still here so he's here longer in the morning he's here longer in the afternoon and he helps in the middle of the day in his lunch break so that I think has helped reduce my anxiety in the first few weeks when he had off completely but it also helps just now especially with a toddler so coronavirus stuff aside I still think that the second time around it is easier even though we have the added challenge of having two but I'm going to talk about that in a bit first up I just want to talk about um, postpartum experience with a first baby and I'm going to sort of limit postpartum to the first six weeks I'm six weeks postpartum now so I feel like that's a good time to sort of cap it I might go a bit further for the first baby though I really hope the camera is not picking up all the wind here because that might be ruin the whole video anyway um okay so the first thing i want to talk about is the lack of sleep so for me with my first baby um i actually practically didn't sleep for four days straight because i was in labor the first night the next two nights i hardly got any sleep because um of just not being able to sort of fall asleep with the newborn in the hospital and all the noises they make and just being anxious and the second night um, babies are known for just being really restless and then when we took him home he was restless he was actually hungry because my milk hadn't come in so he didn't get sleep any then and by the next morning I was a complete mess I actually th was um, thought I was going into the postpartum psy psychosis stage um, I thought that the hospital was gonna come and take my baby away I couldn't keep food down I was dry reaching by that stage it was like my body was kind of shutting down I literally had had about an hour's sleep across four days I was in really bad shape that was far and away the worst time of my life the scariest time of my life and I was thinking what have we done it was a very very scary scary time so that my introduction to motherhood was not good for that reason sleep deprivation um, and then there's also the the trouble with breastfeeding even if you do a breastfeeding class and they they teach you about different things 
methods and stuff i don't think they you don't have a full perception of what it is to have like engorged boobs and leaky boobs and um the engorgement is really painful it lasts for about two or three weeks and that's just when your milk comes in and you have a full supply and then over the course of those few weeks your baby establishes what your body actually needs to make through how much they're taking and so then after two to three weeks your body will regulate and your boobs will go down to a normal size and be quite comfortable but it's very painful at the beginning and breastfeeding is also hard breastfeeding is a natural thing but it doesn't come completely naturally you kind of have to learn how to do it I saw a lactation consultant the first time around because I was having trouble with with latching I also used breast shields for a few weeks to help with that um, but yeah and my milk was slow to come in probably because I was so sleep deprived and not eating properly um, and that also affected my baby's weight gain the first week um, so we had to go back and forth to the hospital for a couple of things but all in all it's kind of a full-on time it's not just like you go home and fall into this natural state of dreamy motherhood in this beautiful nursery that you created it's it's full-on it's uncomfortable it's it's hard the other thing about the first time postpartum particularly but even this time to a degree well actually clothing like it takes a while for you to figure out the best clothes to wear the best way to like cover yourself from leaks the best bras to wear um all that stuff is just things that you have to think about that are hard to completely figure out until you have the baby um also even if you're really prepared with all your baby gear it's hard to know exactly what you'll need so how your nursery is going to run how you can best set it up um, whether you need um, towels to use as like birth blocks and things whether you're you need dummies like there's all these things that you just don't know until you have the baby home and you're like oh you figure out that you know singlets are annoying because they ride up so you need to go out and get snap singlets instead you figure out that certain brands of onesies are much easier to use than others side note just get bond zippies they're the best by far more expensive but best so the first sort of few weeks the postpartum period it's not it it can be sort of a lot of just organizing and learning and the other thing about it is um, what I felt when we were coming home from the hospital and in those first few days is oh my goodness a complete sort of lack loss of loss of identity it feels like because your whole experience of being an independent person who and you only have to basically worry about yourself goes out the window and your whole world is about looking after this baby around the clock and um, breastfeeding and pumping and um in a and, you know feeling gross because after you have a baby you don't just shrink back down to your pre-baby body some people might but i certainly haven't either pregnancy and so you kind of feel all flubbery and gross and your clothes have milk stains on them and you're like slobbing around the house and you baggy clothes it's just and you know you're just not feeling your best probably um so where was i where was i going with that i can't remember i've lost my train of thought but let's go on to the next point oh yeah loss of identity yeah so your whole world becomes about this baby um the other thing is that particularly after if you have a partner who's i've got some time off when they go back to work it's sort of it's sort of reasonably nice when they're off work and then when they go back to work and it's all on you it feels like a lot of responsibility and um sort of like groundhog day because you're just doing the same thing 
day in day out and you're limited to a degree on on what you can do and where you can go because um, you have to pack up a baby and all the essentials that they need. I was pretty lucky with Jed where we lived. Um, we lived close to shops, a park and my mother's group clinic all within 15 minutes walking distance. So we would walk a lot and it helped me in those early days to just get out and see other people. Um, even if I wasn't interacting with those people, just seeing other humans helped me. Um, because I did go through a bit of like a depression, anxiety, funk. I, f I think I felt and had anxiety for the first four months or so of Jed's life to the point where I did go to the doctor and inquire about going on medication but then I decided that I didn't want to and actually once he started being able to sleep better in the daytime the anxiety lifted a lot for me because then I got back some time but um yeah with the first few months with him he I had trouble with settling him down for naps um in the first few weeks you babies usually sleep very well and very easily in that sleepy newborn phase makes it a lot easier but after about three weeks they tend to wake up and it can be harder to get them to sleep which is what happened with Jed and so it wasn't and so for the first few months of his life it was a lot of sitting in a dark room trying to get him to sleep and transfer him to a cot and then he'd wake up and I found like I felt like I didn't know how to get him to sleep and then I wasn't getting much personal space and that was really difficult to me and as someone who likes their own space to do things and get things done and um, it was difficult for me to not have that time and I got frustrated quite a lot and I had to get um, my husband to come home from work a few times when baby wasn't sleeping and I was just kind of at my wits end with with frustration of not having any time to myself um, but that does pass well it did for me anyway all babies are different that's the thing Jace is actually surprising me um, the fact that he's six weeks old and I am able to put him in his bassinet and he will have naps for like an hour or up to three hours and without too much fuss and that's surprising me but I think a lot of it comes down to experience and um, feeling less anxious about it being able to read his sleep cues better and act on them also sort of just knowing that each stage is a phase so I feel less intense and less stressed and he probably feeds off that um, but also all babies are different and some are going to be better at falling asleep than others. Um, so do, 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 do. I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to say for the challenges of the experiences with the first baby. Um, so I'll move on now to talk about second baby. Mmm, cold coffee. Okay, so as I said at the big sorry oops as I said at the beginning of the video with your second baby I feel like overall for me it has been so much easier um, I will say just at the start the most challenging thing has been juggling um, having a toddler as well so a two and a half year old um, I think that juggling two will depend a lot on the child's age. With Jed's age, um, you know, he he has tantrums. He has trouble with his emotions. They don't have the ability to understand completely what's going on. You can't reason with them, and and he's used to him being the center of our universe and having all the attention to mum and dad's attention being divided so it has definitely been a challenge to manage jed's needs and emotions to a degree he is an independent little guy so he'll happily 
um, play outside by himself and he he's very caring towards Jace but we have had more I don't know if the tantrums are a result of bringing someone else into the house or if it's just his age um, like difficulty with following instructions and taking forever to do basic things like to get him dressed in the morning when you need to go and tend to a crying baby um, it is tricky um, kind of yeah we yeah it's tricky but you you manage um, but overall, aside from that, it has been so much easier. Some of this, for me, definitely comes down to the fact that I had a much, more, like a positive birth experience with my second, and with with Jed, I didn't. I had a traumatic experience. If you want to hear more about that, I will link the video below. Um, I spoke about my birth experience, but. I think with Jace, I kind of started off on the right foot by having such a positive experience that when I think about it and reflect on it, I felt really good about it. Um, the thing with Jace as well is I was rested. So I had an induction, which meant that I wasn't in labor through the night before and I was actually able to sleep. And the night after he was born so the night uh, like he was born in the afternoon and then he had to spend the night in the um in the intent uh, the special care nursery and so therefore i got to sleep by myself in my room and just i got woken up by the nurses to go in and feed him which meant that i got sleep and the second night in the hospital, I also got sleep because I just hauled him into the bed with me and we both slept. So sleep is so, so, so important. Um, something I found out with Jed, um, when I was having, when I had complete sleep deprivation, it got to the point where I was unable to fall asleep because I was so stressed that even when Jed was sleeping, I had trouble falling asleep because um, yeah, because I was so highly strung, I did learn that even just shutting your eyes helps to relax you and kind of counts as rest. So if you have to do that, just shut your eyes. Um, put on a YouTube video and relax, like do something relaxing that will coax you into falling asleep if you're having trouble. Um, oh, can I just go back to first experience as well I just want to say that with my first um, I had guilt around using formula so I was you know I wanted to breastfeed and when I had to give Jed formula because he wasn't getting enough milk from me in those first few days it was a sense of sort of a bit of a sense of failure um, whereas with Jace as soon as he was born he needed formula because his sugars were low and so and I was just like, yeah, give it to him, no worries. And um, it was sort of less of a big deal. So I just want to say like guilt around it, guilt around formula and stuff is is an, something that some people might have to contend with. Not, not that I have issues with it, but it is just part of the experience that you may have. Anyway, back to the second. Um, so yeah, started off much better experience because of the sleep and stuff. Um, and then just, what am I gonna say? Da, 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 more prepared. Oh yeah, with the second, it's kind of when you've done it all before, you already have a lot of the gear that you need and you also know what things, you have an idea of what things to use and what things not to bother with. So for example, um, um, what I mentioned before, we know which type of onesies are the easiest to use. We know not to even bother with onesies that have snap buttons on them. We know um, about using a wool nappy cover to hold in the wheeze at night. We know about using the ready-made swaddles instead of muslin cloths, much easier for our kids. Um, we know about, we've got the white noise machines. Um, 
we know about like with sleeping how to read the tired cues so with jace like as soon as he yawns that's my cue of like oh you're tired you need to go to sleep so you just know things that make it easier but something else that makes it easier is that you know that even when they are having a challenging day of sleeps so some days he'll have great sleeps some days he'll have short sleeps and it, yes it is still a bit frustrating when that happens but you just know that this is not permanent you just know that um, it's just a day or it's just a phase I can look at my two-year-old and know that he started sleeping to through the night at like he took a while he was probably a year old but I can look at him and know that this phase and the tricky bits are short and that within no time these two boys are going to be playing together and he's going to be sleeping through the night and he's going to be sitting up he's not going to need me to carry him around the house like this all the time you know he's i'm going to be able to sit him up and he's going to be able to play with his own toys and um not need me like every second of the day um so you just having the knowledge that each phase is uh, fleeting helps you to deal with them and in general just helps you to be more relaxed um so this time i am feeling much more at ease i don't i do have some anxiety like if he's having the main source of my anxiety at the moment is um when jed needs my attention and i'm trying to put jace down and i'm trying to put jace down in like a calm quiet environment in the dark and jed's coming in going hi hi what are you doing and i'm like shh and he doesn't get it that's a bit of a challenge and i feel the anxiety jed's tantrums are more a source of anxiety than jace is um but all in all because jet jace is sleeping much better than jed was there's less anxiety as a whole and i don't have any postpartum depression i will i do want to touch on though the um well i say at the moment because that can that stuff can change at any time but let's talk about the hormones though because the hormones are intense when your milk comes in usually it's day three but it can differ um it's such a massive hormone shift i can actually pinpoint to the moment when my milk came in i was sitting on the lounge and it was like this massive flood of emotions i just started crying even though jed was awake and i don't like to sort of concern him by just me breaking into tears out of nowhere but it was just an intense flood of hormones and that can be really hard um for me i was upset about not being able to have as much time with jed so i felt like first of all i will say that like when i was in hospital for two nights like three days total when i got home jed seemed huge like it seemed like he'd grown up overnight um and it also seemed like over the course of three days when he'd been watched by three different people family members and a friend he had all these experiences and we're talking about these things that i didn't know about and i'm not used to like not knowing everything so that was hard and i felt a disconnect from him and i felt and i found it really challenging holding jace um and feeding him and not being able to cuddle jed and not being able to like go to go on a walk with him and Lindsay because i needed to tend to jace um i felt like i was missing out there are a couple of times where um Lindsay will put jed to bed and i couldn't do like go and tuck him in or give him a kiss um or read the story and it just broke my heart and just sort of like we had our routine pretty set with Jed and I and we in the afternoons particularly like he'd get up from his nap and we'd have a snack together on the lounge and watch play school and sit close together and share a snack and it was just a special thing and to have that go and 
we had to have that change and it still is hard it still is hard to have that shift you know because I think the older child senses that they're no longer the baby and they struggle with that a little bit but so do I because he's he's still my baby it took probably a week or so of being back home for for me to see him again as like the, the little person that he still is but I will say it was quite difficult to adjust to that um, and particularly with the hormones raging and yeah that that has been that has been a challenge with with going from one to two babies um, but it kind of is what it is and what what helped me to get through those emotions of sort of guilt guilt at not being able to give Jed all my attention when he needed it is realizing that even though it might be quite tricky now um, that his brother is, is the greatest gift for him and he's going to have that uh, his brother as his playmate even though at the moment Jace is just like a little blob of mush <laughs> he doesn't can't play with him obviously but it helped me to deal with the feelings of guilt by knowing that um, it's going to to be better for him eventually another thing that has been challenging kind of all over again with going um, with the second baby is kind of experiencing that um, I don't want to say loss of independence but let's say temporary loss of independence and freedom because with a toddler once they're napping once a day you gain the freedom of being able to go out in the morning and do an activity like play group or go to the library or go to the beach or the park and again in the or the shops like you can get things done for yourself with your toddler and then once you bring a newborn into the mix it's like you go back to not having that same freedom and independence which is tricky from a personal perspective because you kind of feel like that um, closed in with the four walls around you again and yes you can still go out and about with a, with a newborn of course but it is much trickier to pack a toddler and a baby up to go anywhere because you have to think of you know you have to pack a double pram you have to pack all the stuff that um, the newborn needs plus all I think of a toddler like it's actually really was really easy and so fun I used to love going to to Westfield at Miranda where <laughs> and just wheeling around with Jed sometimes like I think I did it once a week or fortnight and just like he would sleep and I would um, um, do bits of shopping or when he got a bit older we would go on lunch dates together and have dumplings like so fun and it was easy with him but he was also an age where he didn't complain or wasn't restless or wasn't even walking most of the time so um, it's very different going out of the house with a toddler and a baby because the baby's easy but the toddler wants to walk or the toddler gets restless or the you know the toddler isn't just happy to wheel around in a pram so it is kind of you do kind of shrink back into those four walls my camera battery is flashing so I'm gonna have to finish this um, there was one more thing I wanted to say um, and I can't remember what it is I think I'll just have to leave it there because this is going to finish but I hope that you found this video useful and thank you so much for watching um, I'm going to do a video soon on some postpartum essentials that I've found helpful so that's going to be coming when I can record